Hi everyone, it's Tristan, and today we're in for a new video after, let's say, 10 months that I didn't make any videos of Java. So today we're going to start setting up a Discord bot with GDA, again, another bot, but this time it's going to be a bit different than the older one. So let's get started by creating the project. That will be the first thing that we really want to do, that's for sure. So for myself, I'll just call it YouTube bot. You can select the location that you want. Um, it's going to be Java, Maven. Uh, you don't have to create a Git repository. That's uh, your entire choice. We're going to remove the sample code. And right here under the advanced settings, you can, uh, I'm going to add CA Tristan dot uh, YouTube bot, let's say. And that'll be it. Let's click create. All right, so once it's created, we should have something that looks just like that. All right, so first things first, we're going to add the GDA dependency inside the palm.xml. So let's get started. Well, first of all, you just want to make uh, a block called dependencies, just like that. Press enter just so you can have, you know, those two blocks, one over the one over each other's, basically. Now, in the description, you should have a link which will bring you to GitHub Deviation, um, Deviate from the world, actually, he changed his name. Um, anyways, so that should be the GDA Java Discord API GitHub repository. So you just want to scroll down until right here in the summary, you see download. Just click on that. And as you can see right here, we've got a bit something that looks like what we've got over here. What we've got over here. As you can see, we've got a block called dependencies. And if I go back onto the GitHub repository for GDA, you've got a dependency right here, dependency tag. You just want to copy this, bring it inside your palm.xml, just paste it inside those two dependencies block or tags, whatever you want to call them. And right here, as of a version, we're going to say 5.0.0 beta.3. And right here on the top right corner, you should see a load maven change. Control plus shift plus O. So you can click onto that little button. Otherwise, you can do control shift O, and that will reload this palm.xml. If it still doesn't work for you, you can right click on the palm.xml, go all the way down until you see maven, and just click onto reload project. If I click on it, as you can see, it's going to do the same thing. And now you shouldn't have any errors inside of this block. Those blocks should have been downloaded. Then there's going to be another GitHub repo in the description, and that's going to be my own GitHub repo about GDA, which is Easy Commands. And what does it do? What does Easy Commands do? Well, Easy Commands is just an easy way to make slash commands with GDA. So I'll explain a bit more in a future, in the next video, actually, how it works. In this video, I'll just do the basics of setting up the bots, the bot with easy commands, and that'll be it for that video. So anyways, what you want to do is just download the zip right here. And when you're going to download the zip for myself, there's no jar right here. But for yourself, when you're going to download the zip, uh, you're going to be able to open it and you're going to see easy .jar. So for myself, I've put the easy .jar inside my documents. And I've created a folder called easy commands and I've just put the jar right here. So now how are we going to put this? How are we going to import this library inside IntelliJ EDA? So you just want to click on those three little dots right here on the top right corner. Go to project structure. You can also do control alt shift s to open this project structure right here. You will want to go to libraries. So as you can see right here, we already have a couple of libraries. That's totally normal. You shall also see that you've got net deviation, deviation GDA 5.0. But what we want to do, press on the plus button right here and add a Java library, basically. So then you want to locate the dot jar right here. As for myself, it's in my documents. So you want to locate it, click on it, then click OK. As you can see, it should see, it should find the easy comments and try to add it to your model. For myself, the model is YouTube bot. Click OK. Then you want to click apply. OK. And now you should be good to go. So let's get started. So I'm going to right click on the Java folder right here inside of source main. Right here we've got Java. 
we want to right click on it and create a package. I'm going to call it ca.tristan.youtube.bot. All right, so that's going to be my package. Then you want to right click on it, create a Java class. Let's call it main. So inside of that class now, with EDA, you can do something pretty useful, which is uh, you can just write main, press enter. And as you can see, it creates you the main function to start a Java program. Otherwise, you can just do public static void main string list, which is called args. So this is the executable arguments when you launch a Java program. But we're not here to talk about that. We are here to create a Discord bot. So first things first, what I always like to do inside of that function is to instantiate the main class that we are in at the moment. So by doing that, all the functions right here that you're going to have inside of your main class, they're all going to be inside of that little main dot, as you can see. Now, right now, we don't have any functions. But why do I do that? It's for example, if I've got a little function right here, let us just let's call it update, for example. Well, I won't be able to do this dot update. You see, it's going to create me an error. So I'm going to remove that, for example, and oh, I'm still going to have another error. It's going to try to tell me to put this update function static, but that's not really useful. So what you want to do during that case is instantiate the main class, and then you will be able to use that main class to call the update function. So that's always useful to do. All right, so now let's start a bot. That would be a good idea to start with. So you want to call GDA builder. And as you can see, you should have this right here that pops up. So net deviation GDA API. You just want to import this right here. Then I'm just going to call it GDA builder equals GDA builder dot create. And right here, it's going to ask for a string, which is a token, the token of your bot. But we'll get to this later on. And right here, it's going to also ask for gateway intents. So what are gateway intents? So let's already do that. So you're going to call arrays as list. And we're just going to call it gateways intents. And you can close this right here, this line of code. That's pretty much it. So now as you can see, we've got an error right here. So let's fix that already. So it's going to be a private final gateway intent. And we're going to create a list of it because we're going to have a bunch of gateway intents. Let's just call it gateway intents as we've just called it right down here. And inside of it, we can now finally put gateway intent and for example, we're going to put message content, then we're going to put gateway intent dot direct messages. We're going to put gateway intent dot guild messages. And the last one that we're going to put for this video is going to be the guild members. You can now close this right here with a dot column. I don't know how we call this actually in English, but anyways, you know what I mean. Now, right here, we still have an error. So how are we going to fix that? Well, basically right here, we've called our main class. So usually you should do main dot gateway intents. And now this should fix all of your problems. Also, another way to do that, you can also pass it static, as I said earlier. And now you can remove that main right here. And we're going to keep it like that because for gateways intents, I really like putting it static because we can access it from everywhere. Now, the next line of code that we need to put inside of this class to start the bot because right now the bot is almost started we're almost done we want to call gda which this is the main api for java discord api basically that's the main class that rules out all the api and then you just want to say that it equals gda builder so what we've just created on top right here dot build and then you want to put another dot and just call await ready, just like that. Await ready. And now you can close off this block. And now we're going to have an error right here. An end little exception, Java lang interrupt exception. So why is that? It's because this line of code right here, await ready, is going to await till the bot is started to continue executing the rest of the code under it. So it's going to wait till the bot is started. And then it's going to finish executing all the other code that we're going to have down here. So that's pretty useful if you if you want to create comments, if you want to, you know, that everything just goes in a good flow, basically just the bot is started and then you can call all of your comments, all of everything, basically. So you're sure that there won't be any errors while loading the bot. So we're going to fix that by adding pros interrupted exception. And now we're good to go. As you can see, usually it throws interrupted exception. So we've just had it right here. Now everything works. All right, so now our bot is pretty much ready to get started. 
But if I start this link class, you're going to see, oops, we've got an error. Token may not be empty. Yes, that's right. We don't have any token. So in the description, you're going to have another link again, which is to Discord developer portal applications. You can now click on new application right here on the top right and add it a name. So for myself, it's going to be YouTube bot. We're going to check the terms of services, create. All right. So this right here is the general information of our bot, which it's not really useful. We want to go right here on the right uh, left side. Actually, we want to click on bot. Now build a bot. Bring your app to life by adding a bot user. This action is irreversible because bots, are, because robots are too cool to destroy. So, yes, do it. Let's create a bot. It's going to ask you for your 2FA code. So once you've inputted your 2FA code, well, the wild bot has appeared, as you can see. So right here, you've got the username of your bot. You've got the discriminator of your bot. This you cannot change it. You can change the username to whatever you want. And you can change also the image to whatever you want, as you can see. And now right here, you're going to have a token. So you just want to click copy. And then you can paste the token right here. If we go down here, and still in our bot, the bot section, if you go down here, you, see, you should see privilege, gateway, intents. Presence, intent. So we're just going to check that. We're going to check the server members intent and the message content intent. For now, we're going to check all of those. In the future, you will be able to re remove the ones that you don't need. But as of this for now, we're just going to check them all. And then you want to go inside of OAuth2. If you go into URL generator, we can now check a bot. We can also check applications.commands. And then down here, that's all the permissions that you want your bot to have inside of your server. So I'm just going to set administrator because I want my bot to have all of the permissions inside of my server. So as you can see right here, we've got a generated URL. So if I copy it, I just go inside of a new tab, paste the URL. As you can see, we can now select the server we want the bot to join. So we'll make a join EvoV private. Click continue. You can make it join the server that you want, actually. And then you will want to confirm you want to grant YouTube bot the following permissions on EvoV private. Administrator. So let's check and just say authorize. Check that you are human and boom, the bot has been authorized. All right. So now inside of the server, you should see now that YouTube bot is inside of your server and he now has a role. Well, you won't usually have a role bot, but usually you will have a role, a custom role, which is the same name as the bot. For myself, it's YouTube bot. That's great. Now let's start a bot. Let's go back onto IDA, whatever you want to call it. And now you can now click run. And usually it's going to say info GDA login successful. The WebSocket client has been connected and it's done loading. So if I go back inside, inside of Discord, we can now see YouTube bot is up and running. Well, that's all great. All right. So now we are going to create, we're actually going to add the easy comments library, the library that I've created for y'all. So to do that, it's pretty easy. What you want to do is just say easy comments. As you can see, you should see CA Tristan easy comments dot comments. Just click on that and just say, just call it easy comments, for example, and it will equal a new easy comments class. Now, right here inside of here, you're going to have an error. That's because you need to pass the GDA argument and then you need to pass true or false, you can decide, but that's just to use the dev comments. So the dev comments will get inside of that later on. So for now, just leave it to false. Then you want to say GDA dot add event listener easy comments. We're also going to call easy comments dot log current executors, just like that. That's a little simple function that if I control click on it, as you can see, it's just going to log all the comments that are registered inside of the of the bot, basically inside of our guild. That's pretty useful for debugging. So for now, we're just going to let it right here. And now that's pretty much it. Easy comments has been set it up and is ready to be used. So now just for testing purposes, we are going to test if easy comments work. So right under here, we're just going to say easy comments now add executor and we're going to say new help command. So the help command has been given by me inside of the library as a default command, which can be useful in some cases. So let's restart the bot now and let's see if easy comments work fine. 
So as you can see right here, it said, okay, but there's no commands. It didn't work, actually. It didn't add the help command. So right under easy commands right here, you will want another line of code, which will be easy comments dot. And once you've added those two lines of code, you can now start the bot and we'll see if the command work. If the command doesn't work, as of right here, as you can see in the logs, it just, say, it just said, okay, with an empty list. You just want to restart the bot again. And when you will have restarted the bot again, you should see command slash help with the ID of your command. If you don't, if you still don't see it, I highly encourage you to restart the bot again until you see it. Because that's a little problem with Discord, which it just takes a little while before the commands get registered correctly. So now if we go inside of Discord and whatever channel now, you will be able to say slash help. As you can see right here, that's a good one because I've got another bot, which is called support bot. So now if I execute it, if I execute this command, you should see help evov private. There's no comments to show for the server. This help message was generated by easy comments. There we go. So if you see this, that's because the comment system works. All right, everyone. So that was pretty much it for this short little YouTube video. As you can see in this video, we've set it up easy comments and we've also set it up the bot. So we've set it up everything basically. So in the next video, we'll set up some little custom commands. We're going to start using easy commands a bit. Let's play around with it a bit. And then we're going to see for the other videos what we're going to do. But hey guys, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and keep coding. See ya.